Our next speaker here this, this evening, uh, a lady that I just met today, of course my wife has been on the phone with her constantly over the last month or so. Uh, she's the other half of the organizing committee for the uh, Campbell River uh, PFLAG Society. Uh, she's a human rights activist, she's a gay rights advocate, and she's a little nervous, so give her a warm welcome. This is Ellen Robertson. Thank you, Ellen. Good evening, everyone. I want to talk about homophobia and heterosexism, about the ignorance, fear, and silence that surround and perpetuate them both. I understand the reluctance to get involved and the fear of being rejected by one's group for standing up for what we believe is right. And I realize that tonight I'm preaching to the choir. C'est la vie. <laughs> I understand how we can ignore and go along with homophobic behavior, even if it's only, only Joke. jokes or innuendo because of this fear of rejection. I've done it myself. Gay people have done it. Most people want to be long, to be accepted. Pressure to conform is effective. A couple of months ago, I heard a young man speak about what it had been like for him growing up gay in Campbell River, of his suicide attempt and his efforts to deny, even to himself, that he was gay. Hearing his story moved me deeply and made me realize that I could remain silent no longer, do nothing no longer. Our speaking up may mean the difference between life and death for some gay people. Now I understand the meaning of the saying, if we are not part of the solution, we are part of the problem. The silence of even well-meaning people helps homophobia to thrive and to hurt so many. Sixteen years ago, some youths tried to run over the son of one of my friends because he was gay. In 2001, Aaron Webster was viciously beaten to death in Stanley Park because he was gay. Three weeks ago, a Campbell River student was harassed and chased by a sizable homophobic group. How much longer are people going to stand silently by and do nothing? Suicide is the second leading cause of death for young people between the ages of 15 and 24 in Canada. The first is accidents. This is reported by Statistics Canada 2004. Research suggests that many suicides are disguised as accidents. The 2008 Crisis Intervention and Suicide Prevention Centre report states that suicide rates for both indigenous and gay and lesbian youth are six times higher than the national suicide youth, youth suicide average. These are shocking figures. These are not just numbers on a page. These are someone's sons, daughters, sisters, brothers. Hitler could murder millions of people because ignorance, prejudice, fear, hate-mongering, and the silence of good-hearted people created a climate in which there was no effectual opposition to the racism, ableism, and homophobia that fueled this genocide. It could happen again right here if we allow racism, ableism, ageism, and homophobia to go unchallenged. Like Martin Luther King, I have a dream that one day our children will be judged, not by the color of their skin or their sexual orientation, but by their character, their deeds, and the love in their hearts, by their respect for, openness to, inclusion, and welcoming of all people, regardless of skin color, sexual orientation, disability, or other difference. And I would just like to end with that if anyone is interested in getting involved in anti-homophobic initiatives, please contact Tara Jordan at NISA. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Ellen.